1993, a study of in-state annual tuition rates at public schools in the U.S. drew a random sample of 56 public colleges and universities that had a mean of $2,319 and a standard deviation of $1,136. Construct the 95% confidence interval for the true mean annual in-state tuition cost for U.S. colleges and universities in 1993. In an interview from 1993, a college president claimed the $3,527 per year in-state tuition that his college charged was average for public schools. Does the interval you created contradict his claim? Okay, so I've underlined some really common key phrases here. I mean, this is a very explicit, explicit phrase that tells us what we have to do. It says, construct the 95% confidence interval for the true mean. So we know that it's a 95% confidence interval that we have to create, and we know it's for the mean. So this is very explicit. There's no mystery as to what we have to do. And at the end, we're going to answer a quick question that involves the interpretation of the interval we just created. But let's start with this first part, which is to construct the confidence interval. In this course, in fact, in all elementary stats courses, the confidence intervals can usually be done with four steps. So I've created the four-step approach that I like to tell my students to use. The first step is pretty straightforward. It's just to record all the information, all the numbers, the data from the problem that we're going to need to use to create the confidence interval. So you're going to need an N. You'll need an, a sample mean, a sample standard deviation, or a population standard deviation. You'll need a confidence level, and you'll need an alpha value, which will come from the confidence level. That's why I put them next to one another. Then the next step, you'll need a table value. This is a critical Z value in this problem. And then we're going to need to calculate the margin of error using this formula. That's just that critical v Z value from step two times the standard deviation divided by square root of N. And then finally, we're going to fill in this simple expression here, which gives us the final step, which is the confidence interval itself. All right, so it's a pretty simple four-step approach. In fact, step one is just sort of record keeping. Step three, you're plugging numbers into a formula, numbers that you will have already. And step four, you're doing the same thing, just plugging in numbers. Simple arithmetic here. So the only step of any kind of challenge or difficulty is probably step two, where you have to get a table value because it's not given directly. We have to go find it ourselves. But we're pretty good with the table by now, so hopefully that should be an easy task as well. Okay, so let's start filling in the first step, which is the record the data step. So when I read the problem, it says that there was a random sample of 56 public colleges and universities. That 56 is my sample size, right? So I'm going to assume here that N is 56. 56 schools were surveyed. Then it says that that had a mean of 2,319. So that's my X bar. That's the average tuition from the study. And a standard deviation of $1,136. The confidence level is expressed here, 95% confidence level, so we're going to go ahead and use 95%. Alpha would, of course, be 5% in that case, right? 5%. All right, now our next step is the part where we have to go to the table. This might be considered the hardest step of the confidence interval. We learned how to do um, get the critical Z values. We learned how to do this using the T table. So we're going to look up sort of the alpha divided by 2 part of this on the T table. So remember, it's this piece here that we look up on the T table under the last row of the table, and we'll find the critical Z value in that instance. As long as it's one of these classic confidence levels that's so common, that would be 95, 98, 99, and 90. Those are the common confidence levels that we can use the T table for. So what we're going to do is look up half of alpha on the T table. So if alpha is 5%, half of alpha is 2.5%. So what I want to write is a little note here. I'm going to say, look up 0 0.025 on the T table. And that's how we're going to get this number. So we're going to go to our table, look up 0 0.025 on the T table, and that's going to give me the value that we're looking for. So let's go to that table now and look that number up. Okay, so we're using the T table to find our critical Z value. Remember, we had alpha to be 0 0.05, so we're chopping that in half and looking up 0 0.025 then on this table. 0 0.025 is this column here, the third column over. So we're going to go ahead and isolate that column, and then we'll go all the way down to where we see infinity at the bottom of the table, right? That gives us our Z value. Okay, so all the way there at the bottom, we see the answer is 1.960. Okay, so now we found that our critical Z value is 1.960. Our next step is to calculate the margin of error. 
I think the margin of error is pretty easy now because we have all these items that we need to fill in the formula. So we just found that the Z critical value is 1.96. We're going to multiply by S, which is 1,136. And we're going to divide that by the square root of 56. That's our N. And then we'll come up with a calculation for error. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that now. We'll have 1.96 times 1,136 divided by the square root of 56. You don't need any special parentheses here or anything. This is straightforward for the calculator. It won't mess up the order of operations on you. It should be very easy. And the calculation here will give you 297.53 dot, dot, dot. It's going to go on and on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to store that in my calculator so I have it. You can just, if you don't have a store feature in your calculator, you can just, um, you know, keep more decimal places so that at the end you don't round to the final step. All right, then the last step we have to do is to simply fill in this little arithmetic problem. So we're going to say, all right, our X bar from the first step was 2,319. From there, we're going to subtract off that error that we just found in the step above, right, that 297.53 basically. And then we're going to take the 2,319 again, and we're going to add the error to it. And that's going to give us our final answer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that in my calculator very easily now that I've stored that error into my calculator. So I'm going to do 2,319 minus the error, and then I'm going to do the same thing again, but this time I'm going to say plus the error. Okay, so my final result then ends up becoming 2,021.5 up to 2,616.5. That's my confidence interval. Okay, the final step we'd like to do with our confidence intervals is to interpret them, to write a statement down that expresses what we just found, and then also to interpret it. So let's first write the statement out a statement that tells us what we just found. So here's what we should say. We're going to say when we go to interpret this guy, the little asterisk, I'm going to put the interpretation up here. The standard way to do this is to say, we are blank percent confident that the true blank is between blank and blank. Okay, so what you fill in those spaces is the information we just found, right? For example, our confidence level, we are 95% confident that the true, the true what? Well, this problem was about the mean, right? That the true mean is between, and in this case, we're going to put in these numbers, is between 2,021.50, right? Up to... $2,616.50. Okay, and these are dollar amounts. You can throw in the dollar symbol if you want to. That's fine. But essentially what we're looking at here is this is the true mean annual in-state tuition cost, right? So this mean, you could have written more. You could have said the true mean annual in-state tuition cost. But as long as you wrote the mean, people can refer back to the problem to see what it actually is, what mean we're talking about. So this is what we think... This is the interval in which we think that the true mean lies. So the true average should be somewhere between these two numbers. We're 95% confident of that. Let's compare that to what they asked us about here. They said finally in this problem that in an interview from 1993, a college president claimed that the $3,527 per year in-state tuition that his college charged was average for public schools. Well, if we look at that number, the $3,527 number, it's actually outside of the interval, isn't it? It's above this interval. So if this was an interval on the number line, 3,000, of course, is on the outside of it, right? It's on the outskirts of that, which means it's outside of the interval. Remember, we're pretty sure, we're 95% confident that the true population mean is within this span. This college president says that was the average in 1993. This number is not inside the interval. So this interval contradicts his claim. So it says, does the interval you created contradict his claim? It sure does. This number is outside of the interval, so it does not make for a good candidate for the population mean. 
you know, had he said that the number was say 2,400, well, 2,400 is within that interval. So if he had said that, we might say he's possibly right. But the fact that his number is outside of it, we can clearly say that our evidence, our sample data here contradicts what he's saying. He's saying that's the average. We think the average is between these two numbers. So at this point, our interval does contradict his claim.